Previously, in the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, the party had been exploring the frigid land of the Stone Men, but found themselves unable to progress further without the likelihood of encountering the Stone Giants that lived here. As they made their way, or as they made ready to explore further, they felt a rumbling beneath them, and were surprised as moss-covered rock near stream, arrived. The young Zorn seemed sullen, disappointed that Bones had not invited him to adventure, and after some discussion, the two realized that they had misunderstood one another. Bones resolved to include Mossy on their adventures below, at least for now. In preparation for potentially meeting the Stone Giants, Ezra began to cast a spell that would allow him to understand their language. But while the party waited for him to finish the casting, one of the stone giants stumbled upon them. The giant was startled and didn't speak a language that the party understood, so Matashtai, in an effort to communicate, reached into the giant's mind. The giant was taken aback, suspicious of the voice in his head, and began to accuse Matashtai of tricking and tormenting the giant and his family. After a bit of conversation, Matashtai was able to convince, or at least confuse the giant, whose name was Gravelock, into being slightly less suspicious of the party, if only just. At least they would now be to the point to where the party could try to discuss and figure out what was going on with the stone giants. During this negotiation, a second stone giant arrived, Kurok. And though this larger giant deferred to Gravelock, he seemed astounded that the giants weren't just pounding the party into paste. Ultimately, Gravelock decided that the party should meet the rest of his family, so that they might be able to traverse the giants' lands as known individuals, and thereby avoid any potential smushing. The party traveled to the central pit area, where they awaited the giant family. There, Ezra was able to cast upon himself the ability to comprehend all languages in an attempt to help with the discussions. Soon after, a great rumbling filled the area as the giants arrived. The party were introduced to three new giants, the twins, Rhodos and Obsidia, and the matriarch of the family, Baleosa. The party also learned of a sixth giant, Zorta, who was not in attendance. Baleosa took charge of the negotiations, conversing with Matashtai telepathically. Though the conversation, or through the conversation, the party were able to learn that the giants were plagued by some unseen tormentor that would muddle their minds, leaving them euphoric but unable to do anything, the effect they called the mind fog. To make matters worse, it seemed that the Tormentor had the habit of laughing at the Giants after the fact, which just caused them to be further enraged. Matashtai arranged for the party to help figure out who this Tormentor was and put an end to the trickery, but it was clear by the end of the conversation that Spaliosa did not like Matashtai and was still suspicious of the group. He ordered the stone giants to remain in pairs so as to avoid being taken by surprise by the party. Before the two groups split, the party learned about a great spire in the middle of the pit that the giants claimed was shielded from everything. Having no real leads upon which to work, the party decided that investigating the spire would be a good place to start. As they walked across the pit to the spire, they realized that this area was littered with the remnants of any, any dead creatures. Some of which were clearly slain by the giants, crushed. But if all the remains were the giants' handiwork, then these creatures had either been here for a very long time or had a penchant for mass slaughter. Either way, the party found the spire easily enough, and after some experimentation from Bones, Matashtai, Ashes, and Mossy, they found that there was indeed some sort of magical barrier guarding it. Ezra decided he would need to approach this from a more magical angle, began to set about his work. 
While doing that, Matashtai decided to bring out the Lantern of Revealing, guessing that perhaps whatever was tormenting the giants was an invisible creature. And indeed, while Ezra performed his arcane investigations, Matashtai and Ashes noticed a small, vibrantly colored creature flying on the edges of the lantern's light. Eventually, Ezra revealed the orb that Raynair had given him. He brought it towards the shielded spire and raised it high. The orb, in response, began to grow larger and become transparent. It encompassed Ezra like a bubble, and four little beams of light shot upwards around it. Ezra was eventually able to surmise that he could mentally control the bubble, and that it was able to ascend, but to what, he did not know. The party gathered within, but unfortunately were unable to ascend due to moss-covered rock near stream's prodigious weight. The party resolved to send Matashtai and Ezra up while Bones and Ashes remained below with Mossy and the Lantern, on the lookout for the invisible creature. The bubble elevator was excruciatingly slow, and over the course of nearly 20 minutes, it ascended several hundred feet into the air. Quite suddenly, the bubble stopped, and Matashtai and Ezra found themselves facing a diminutive castle perched atop the needle-like point of the spire. Matashtai bravely reached outside the bubble towards the tiny castle and was startled to find his hand and arm shrink down to be proportionally sized to the castle itself. Miniaturization magic. Ezra followed, and the two opened the door of the castle to find a small foyer. They didn't want to risk exploring without their allies, so Ezra experimented with the bubble, eventually discovering that he could send it back down without being inside it. Down the bubble goes with a note asking Ashes and Bones to come up. Bones was hesitant to leave Mossy once more, but a brief conversation with the Zorn made the Tabaxi realize that the creature wasn't feeling abandoned by not being able to go into a place, but rather by not being invited to go on the adventure in the first place. The young Zorn was perfectly fine waiting around while others explored the tiny mystery castle. And so Bones and Ashes ascended to meet with Ezra and Matashtai in the small foyer filled with unseen servants, tiny castle, atop an incredibly tall, shielded spire. They'd been searching for Madgoth's castle, but as Bones and Ezra noted from the sign on the door, this was Otto's castle, and they had no idea what they would find here. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.